Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Public Forum Debate Academy. Um, here we have Professor Ruud van Dijk. He's the coordinator of the Bachelors of Arts and Masters of Arts program um, in History of International Relations at the University of Amsterdam. Uh, professor, I wanted to first talk about NATO and its underlying message, which is to create a strategic military alliance. Um, why do you think political cohesion and the ability to unite these nations, for example, Turkey, the United States, why is this political cohesion so important to NATO's alliance? Well, it, it always has been uh, one of the two pillars and uh, ultimately it, it goes back, of course, to the beginning of the Cold War. Uh, that context um, uh, brought this, uh, uh, con content, this uh, conflict with the Soviet Union. Um, and this was about interest, this was about uh, spheres of influence, but it was also about uh, ideas and about visions for uh, the future. And, and this, um, this uh, political side of things played a very important part in the, um, at least the justification for um, uh, why uh, the Europeans and the Americans and the Canadians uh, wanted to have this uh, alliance. Um, so uh, it's been there from the start. It, uh, NATO is a military alliance, uh, but ultimately, you know, militaries or alliances, treaties, they're means to, uh, to uh, a, a larger end. And NATO countries have always argued that, uh, with reference also to uh, the UN, United Nations Charter, that uh, the alliance is there to promote a certain uh, vision for how international relations uh, and societies also ought to be organized. And of course, mm -hmm. it's uh, in reference to um, uh, basic human rights, democracy, uh, freedom, um, all these principles that uh, we, uh, we uh, like to say we stand for uh, in the West. Um, so um, it's been there from the start and everybody understands even though it gets complicated in practice in, in many individual cases, as, as the case of Turkey has proven uh, in, in, in more than once, uh, you can't really, as much as you would like to, uh, get away from it. So um, it, it's there. Um, uh, sometimes gets forgotten amid all the talk of military hardware and, um, and possible scenarios for conflict. Uh, ultimately, most uh, uh, observers come back to this uh, realization, what is this for again? Well, it's for that. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, now I want to talk a little bit about Turkey and its perhaps transition towards a more autocratic regime, especially under President Erdogan. Um, in what ways do you believe that Turkey is moving towards this autocratic leadership regime? And how do you believe this perhaps more autocratic leadership might affect NATO as an alliance? Well, we've, we've been able to observe it uh, um, under the Erdogan government for the past decade and a half, this, mm -hmm. this trend toward authoritarianism uh, in, in uh, Turkey and Turkish politics. Um, and um, I'm not a, a Turkey expert, so I'm, I, I don't speak the language. I, I look at it from the outside as, as a, uh, as a um, follower of, of international uh, uh, developments. But it's been clear that um, um, President Erdogan, maybe probably because he, his, his, his uh, authority was challenged um, uh, inside uh, Turkish politics, uh, has taken a more authoritarian uh, course. Uh, he may have been frustrated also by the lack of progress uh, in discussions with the European Union about eventual uh, maybe Turkish membership or at least closer association of Turkey with, um, with the European Union. Um, and um, that's a problem because um, 
it's not what NATO is supposed to stand for, what the alliance is supposed to promote in the world. Uh, and, and it's gotten, I mean, you asked about what, what could this mean? I mean, we've already seen some of the results where uh, Turkey, uh, President Erdogan got pretty close to uh, uh, President Putin uh, in, uh, in Moscow, in Russia. Mm -hmm. And um, um, you, you, might, you might think that he's as close to, to Russia as he is to his uh, NATO uh, allies. And Americans have, have drawn some conclusions uh, from that and, and, and uh, paired back uh, their collaboration with, uh, with Turkey. So it's, it's, uh, it's a problem because uh, you have to ask if, if Turkey really is still committed to, to the alliance. At the same time, as long as they're in the alliance, as long as they, uh, there is a certain level of cooperation, for example, US and other countries access to uh, Turkish military facilities, this mm -hmm. other aspect of NATO, this military strategic aspect is, 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 is very important and continues right now, I think, to outweigh the, uh, the problems on the political side. It's, if you look at the map, it's, it's for military strategic reasons, it's, right. it's very important also, not just with an eye on Russia, but also with an eye on uh, the Middle East where countries of the West tend to get sucked into whether they like it or not time and again, mm -hmm. to have uh, um, uh, an alliance member who's, uh, that, that is so crucially uh, uh, positioned in that, in, a, in that entire region. Right, and I, that's actually what my next question was about was the geopolitical cons considerations and the benefits that Turkey offers. So maybe to um, a common person who doesn't know so much about Turkey and perhaps its relationship with other NATO uh, countries, um, they might be a little bit confused about why Turkey offers a strategic military benefit. Um, and so I just wanted to discuss with you, perhaps, why does Turkey offer some um, help in military strategy? Why, can, why does the US choose to put bases like the, I believe it's the air bases, for example, in Turkey? Why are these um, locations, I guess, beneficial to have within NATO? Well, it's 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 uh, it's given where Tur Turkey is located, it's it's uh, it's it's a crucial uh, uh, country from where to project uh, military or, or or strategic uh, power or influence. I mean, during the Cold War uh, for the United States, when Turkey was closer to the alliance and there were fewer fewer tensions in that regard. Um, to be able to um, um, use these Turkish military facilities uh, as um, uh, crises developed uh, between Israel and its neighbors or uh, between Iran and Iraq has been, has been uh, uh, just for logistical reasons, uh, highly, highly useful for uh, the United States. Something that didn't work out so well, but seemed to be uh, a big uh, benefit from having Turkey in the alliance was, of course, at the end of the 1950s and early 1960s, when the United States um, stations uh, 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 these uh, these infamous Jupiter uh, intermediate range uh, nuclear missiles in in Turkey to mm -hmm. threaten uh, uh, the Soviet Union. That that seemed to be uh, uh, a, a beneficial aspect of Turkish. Uh, membership, uh, the Turkish alliance, and, until, of course, Khrushchev responded by um, doing the same thing to the U.S., placing uh, Soviet missiles on Cuba, right. and, and then it, it turned out to be a little bit more complicated, and eventually the Jupiters uh, in this secret deal between Kennedy and Khrushchev had to be uh, withdrawn. But today, thinking about the tensions around Ukraine uh, in uh, the Black Sea area, again, to have a country where, uh, with, with, what, with which you can uh, collaborate militarily and which will uh, um, offer you ways to, uh, to operate in that, in that, in that region um, is, is, is also a, a, a major advantage. It would be much more, I mean, the, the configuration for the West to deal with Russia and, uh, and, and, and the Ukraine problem would be rather different if, um, 
if Turkey was not in NATO, was, for example, a friend, a, 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 an ally of, uh, of Russia, mm -hmm. or even neutral. Right. So it's, it's almost as if um, with Turkey, you have um, like almost another limb, essentially. Um, you ba basically get to reach out to almost um, a common area between the intersection between Asia, between Russia, between Europe. Turkey's at the center of that. And having that support is very important. Yeah, or at least having, having a way to maybe um, um, make that real in practice, because there's nothing automatic about it. That's sometimes you look at a map and you say, wow, and which of course is what, for example, today, President Putin is using. He's saying NATO's encroaching upon Russia from all sides. And, and it looks that way when you uh, look at a map and potentially it's how it could work. In the case of Turkey, of course, um, uh, military hardware, where do you buy it? And whose hardware do you use? Uh, it's not so, uh, automatic at all. Um, we earlier talked about how um, Turkey has purchased this um, anti-aircraft uh, technology from Russia, which has led the United States to basically cut Turkey out of uh, the uh, Joint Strike Fighter uh, uh, program technology, mm -hmm. um, because uh, it would, um, uh, so, so um, in, in practice, there's nothing automatic about it, but it, it, one thing, that's pretty clear is that it would be a lot more difficult, a lot more uh, messy um, if you had Turkey outside of the alliance. Um, you know, you go to NATO headquarters, it's very interesting. You visit NATO headquarters in Brussels, uh, you stand in line to uh, get your uh, badge for the day, and you're in line with these, um, these representatives from all these countries from all over Europe, including Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, and you go in, and you see all these people, civilian and military, walk around, Romanians, Estonians, Brits, Dutch, French, uh, they're all there and they're all doing things together. And it includes Turkey at all these levels. And so having Turkey inside the alliance, in spite of President Erdogan's personal agenda, his autocratic tendencies, having all these representatives at all these levels in the organization um, makes, makes a huge difference as to uh, what you can do uh, potentially, but also what, what is very unlikely to happen. Uh, so um, it's true that the, on the political side, there are lots of problems. The problems would be greater, I think, if, um, if Turkey wasn't there or if Turkey were to leave, uh, for example. Of course, yeah. That makes sense. Um, and I actually wanted to touch on I, an idea you talked about, which was the Russian air defense system um, mm -hmm. and Turkey's purchase of that. Um, or I think it might have been a partnership between Russia and Turkey. I just was wondering how would that, I think, harm Turkey's relationship with NATO, um, perhaps from an external standpoint, someone who's not very familiar with the relationship between um, NATO, Turkey, and Russia. It just seems as if Turkey's purchasing this air defense system. But maybe when we take a closer look at it, it seems that Turkey's shifting almost towards perhaps some more Russian technology. Why might this be worrisome for some NATO countries? Well, it's, it's um, perhaps at the most basic level, uh, it gets to trust. And um, this, this um, raises serious doubts, of course, uh, as to um, whether there's enough trust between Turkey and, and its Western, its NATO allies to uh, have a real meaningful uh, collaboration in, in practice. Um, and, uh, and it has had consequences. I referred earlier to how the United States has said, well, then, then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have to cut you out uh, for the largest uh, part of this, uh, of this joint strike fighter. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, project because if you get access to that technology using these Russian um, um, air defense systems, it, it will mean that uh, uh, the Russians eventually will get information about how these things work that, that we don't want them uh, to have. And it's, it could spill over into, into other areas. Um, um, you know, any, any kind of issue uh, where, where Turkey's uh, 
collaboration would be uh, would be beneficial. Um, can we actually still bank on that? Because um, they seem to be going their own way uh, 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 more and more. So it's a very delicate um, uh, balance uh, where uh, uh, but what's unmistakable is that in the past decade or so, mm -hmm. um, the consequences have been that, that, that uh, there are fewer possibilities for collaboration with, uh, with Turkey. And I'm, I'm sure from Turkish perspective, from a Turkish perspective, um, um, the, the regime at least may feel the same way about the, the partners in the West. Um, there's, less, there's less basis for common action because of this, this uh, trust that has eroded. Of course. All right. Um, I think this is the second to last question, which is about the refugee crisis. Um, and it's specifically about that because I think Turkey might be able to use it as a tool um, for leverage. Um, could you expand on that perhaps, um, how this refugee crisis, uh, people moving to Turkey um, has affected Turkey and also how Turkey uses that as a tool for leverage against other NATO countries? Yes, well, it's, it's of course uh, to do with the, uh, the civil war in Syria, uh, right. not only, but uh, uh, for a large part. Uh, that started in uh, 2011. Uh, another way in which Turkey has its own interests and also own reasons to uh, uh, to to work together with uh, Russia, at least since the time that Russia has become very active in uh, in Syria, because it's mm -hmm. right across the border. Um, it has produced um, several million uh, refugees. They haven't all gone north into Turkey from Syria. Uh, a lot of them have also ended up in Georgian, Jordan and uh, Lebanon, but hundreds of thousands uh, of refugees escaping that carnage in Syria have ended up in Turkey, uh, hoping to uh, make it to uh, Western Europe and, and find refuge there, at least temporarily uh, continue their lives, maybe start a new life. And um, Turkey can choose to, uh, to, to, to let them through, to let them pass and create these, these uh, terrible uh, images that, that we've seen from time to time in the, uh, in the, uh, in the waters between uh, Turkey and, uh, and Greece, or it can decide to, um, to um, uh, accommodate these people uh, uh, on its own territory. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it's exact, it has exacted a price uh, from from the Europeans, from the European Union, uh, to uh, to do so. Um, and was it uh, just just last year when he briefly Erdogan uh, reopened uh, the the uh, the gates to uh, to uh, on the Balkans, I think, to uh, to Western Europe? Uh, he's he's reminding uh, Europeans, especially, that. Um, you better pay attention to to uh, what I want, or what I do not want, uh, because I have the ability, thanks to this tragedy uh, playing out in in my part of the world, to make life extremely difficult uh, for you. Um, because the crisis, of course, in 2015, uh, of when when it was at its peak, was for for these for these people fleeing. Um, this uh, this warfare in Syria, but it's often associated the crisis with what uh, Western European governments faced with their own, with their own electorates yep. when yep. hundreds of thousands of people came into tried to get into Western Europe. Um, so there's real leverage there for Turkey, and Turkey uh, Turkey is willing to uh, to use it. Right. I actually even have in my notes that uh, Erdogan has threatened to open the refugee floodgates almost to Europe in response to criticisms. Um, so I can see how that can be used as almost a strategic tool. Yeah. And, right. and, but let's not forget in this context that Turkey has also, I mean, they really have uh, worked hard to, um, to help hundreds of thousands of refugees and, mm -hmm. and um, um, 
these people, uh, it's, it's not as if they, they really can uh, start new lives in Turkey, but they've been fed, they've been housed, uh, the, the children have, have received uh, have access to uh, education. Uh, it's not as if Turkey hasn't uh, carried a very large burden uh, right. as a result uh, of, of this war. And, and you could say on behalf, and Europeans have, have paid Turkey uh, uh, billions of dollars for it, but mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of, um, of the Europeans also. Um, so there's oh. certainly also a Turkish perspective uh, and, and, and it's not all negative when you talk about the Turkish role in this refugee situation. Right, in fact, probably hugely positive for Turkey to um, basically receive funds from other NATO countries and distribute those funds to help uh, the refugee crisis and alleviate that concern. Right. All right, final question. Um, I was just wondering in the long term, um, given that there are quite a few tensions right now, how Turkey should be viewed uh, by NATO in the future um, and how perhaps the United States, other NATO countries should handle their alliance with Turkey and perhaps improve that alliance over time. Yes, I. Well, a year and a half ago, I did an article um, with a uh, with a colleague on um, this this tension in uh, in in NATO, especially today, between what it purports to stand for, you know, these these principles, basic principles of democracy, freedom, human rights and the practice in some member countries. And we uh, uh, um, highlighted Turkey as an example of where there's, there's a good deal of tension between uh, theory and, and, and practice. Uh, where we ended up was that um, also because these military strategic factors play an important part, and we haven't talked about tensions between Turkey and Greece and how it's much better to have both these countries in NATO to help manage these tensions than to, for example, have one outside of uh, outside of NATO, outside right. of all these all these levels where people meet and discuss and try to find solutions to shared challenges. Um, but my my co-author and I uh, concluded, and this is an important part which we haven't really talked about. I mean, we've talked about Turkish politics and President Erdogan and his agenda. But er, uh, Turkey is a lot more. Turkish politics is a lot more than just President Erdogan. Um, there are a lot of Turks, uh, maybe close to 50 percent, who don't approve of his policies at all. And there are a lot of Turks because they, Turkey has gained a lot of experience since World War II with uh, um, democratic processes and, and, and a democratic government who would like to go back to a more representative and less autocratic way of running their own country. And it's not uh, impossible that they, they, uh, they may regain some of that territory they've lost in Turkish politics against uh, the president. Mm -hmm. And so um, because that's a possibility, uh, because you don't want to abandon uh, that part of Turkey, it's Turkey uh, as much as, as the Erdogan part of Turkey. Um, you, uh, I mean, patience is, is, is a good way to, uh, to proceed. Uh, and um, you can't just be patient and be passive. Uh, you have to communicate to the other side what you would like to see happen or what you would like to do together and, and why some things are possible and others are not. So you have to continue the conversation, but um, patience is, is uh, in, in the case of Turkey, also a uh, probably a wise course because ultimately Turkish, Turkish uh, politics, Turkish foreign policy, Turkish NATO policy is going to be uh, decided for a large part by the Turks themselves. And um, it's an autocracy, you could say that. Um, if you look, for example, at the way journalists are being treated in um, independent journalists in Turkey. Right, some being put but in jail. It's, it's, not, it's not a dictatorship yet. There's still room, there's still real elections. Erdogan's party lost an election in Istanbul the, the last time um, uh, one was, uh, was held. That's, that's not insignificant. So um, there's, um, there's reason, there's, good reason to uh, to remain patient 
and 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 try to work on a you know a return of Turkey to the uh, the more uh, uh, um, traditional um, uh, fold of of NATO. Right. So there seems to be a lot of uh, hope almost um, that Turkey can build back um, perhaps some democratic strengths because there's a large majority of peoples within Turkey who actually support that. I, I would say there's potential, yeah. I, I, whether I would be hopeful, I mean, I, you'd have to ask a, Turk, a Turkey expert who, who reads the press, who talks talks to the people there. I, I don't know enough about Turkey to know what the chances are. We do know that economically it's very difficult right now and getting more difficult again, because of mm -hmm. policies of President Erdogan, it's not impossible, I think, that people will hold him accountable and that he will have to compromise and moderate his stance. Uh, if it's difficult economically, um, it may also lead the president to uh, be more accommodating, more solicitous of collaboration support from his uh, Western allies, uh, because uh, they, they may have means to uh, to help Turkey um, economically. Uh, there's all these moving parts where uh, it would be very unwise to say, well, obviously the, um, the, um, the, the, the uh, reality in Turkey right now is, uh, is uh, contradicting what NATO should stand for. So let's just ask them to leave. Let's encourage them to leave. Um, that would be, um, that would be, uh, rash and, 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 and quite unwise in my, in my view. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. I will pause the recording now.